There exist plants capable of doing what modern agriculture still struggles to achieve. Plants that bring dead soil back to life faster than fertilizer ever could. Plants that build ecosystems instead of stripping them bare. Plants whose roots pull carbon from the sky and bury it deep underground, holding water in the earth, preventing erosion, feeding families, and restoring fertility without chemicals, machinery, or yearly intervention. These plants can slow desertification. They can heal exhausted farmland. They can reshape the entire future of how we grow food. And yet, in the very moment the world needed them most, they were labeled a problem, not because they failed, but because they succeeded too well. This is the quiet, almost forgotten story of two regenerative crops, Kernza, a perennial wheat bread from the deep-rooted grasses of ancient prairies, and Pigeon Pea, one of the most powerful nitrogen-fixing legumes ever cultivated by human hands. Both capable of restoring lands we have nearly destroyed. Both capable of supporting families in places where modern crops cannot survive. Both resisted, weakened, or ignored because they threatened the systems built around depletion. Their story doesn't begin in laboratories or modern farms, but in the world long before industrial rows of corn and wheat appeared, in landscapes shaped by fire, wind, migration, and wisdom, in ecosystems that understood balance before we understood agriculture. For thousands of years, soil was treated as a living partner. Farmers worked with the land, not against it. They grew perennials and legumes that mended soil as they fed people. They used diversity, rotation, and ancestral knowledge to keep the earth fertile. And among their strongest allies were plants like pigeon pea. In India, East Africa, and the Caribbean, farmers planted pigeon pea not just for food, but for survival. Its roots reached deep into dry, cracked earth, pulling nitrogen from the air and feeding it to the soil. Its leaves fell at season's end, layering the ground in mulch. Its branches became fuel. Its pods became protein for families who had little else. It was not merely a crop. It was a climate strategy older than written history. And in the far North American plains, something even more extraordinary was unfolding. While farmers elsewhere struggled to keep their soil healthy, the prairies built richness without human help. Their grasses grew roots so deep and strong they held entire ecosystems together. They created topsoil measured not in inches, but in feet. Soil so dark and fertile it stunned early settlers. From these grasses, researchers later developed Kernza, a perennial grain with one defining trait. It never dies after harvest. Where modern wheat must be planted every year, Kernza returns season after season. Its roots travel 10 feet deep, anchoring soil, storing carbon, and feeding microbial life that keeps land fertile. It thrives in drought and heavy rain. It rebuilds land instead of exhausting it. It grows like an ecosystem, not a commodity. Imagine growing grain without plowing. Imagine harvest after harvest without destroying soil. Imagine farming that leaves the land richer, not poorer. This is what Kernza represents, a return to perennial abundance. So why did these plants, capable of healing the earth and feeding people with resilience, receive so little support? Why were they discouraged, ignored, or labeled invasive? To answer that, we need to understand how modern agriculture was constructed. When colonial powers reshaped global farming, and later when industrial agriculture took hold, the definition of a good crop changed. It no longer meant a crop that nourished people or strengthened the land. It meant a crop that required fertilizer, that needed pesticides, that demanded machinery, that forced farmers into yearly cycles of purchase and dependency. A plant that grew freely, a plant that could build soil without chemicals, had no place in that system. Pigeon Pia threatened the fertilizer industry because it provided nitrogen naturally. Kernza threatened the seed industry because it did not require annual planting. Both threatened the logic of monoculture because they encouraged ecological balance rather than resource extraction. Pigeon Pea was dismissed first. 
as colonial governments pushed cash crops like sugarcane, cotton, and tobacco. They discouraged small farmers from growing legumes that enriched soil, but generated little profit for exporters. Later, industrial agriculture reinforced that hierarchy. Advisors told farmers to abandon pigeon pea because it was inefficient. They called it a food for the poor. They worked to replace it with hybrids dependent on irrigation and chemical inputs. Entire regions that once relied on pigeon pea for drought survival and soil fertility lost their resilience. Soils grew weaker. Fertilizer dependence grew stronger. Hunger increased. The plant that had prevented famine for centuries became a symbol of backwardness simply because it supported land and people instead of industry. Kernza faced a quieter, more modern suppression. After the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, scientists recognized that annual tilling was destroying the Great Plains. They knew perennials were the answer, but perennial grains could not be patented or easily engineered into dependency. So instead of transforming agriculture around perennials, the system doubled down on annuals. These were crops that demanded fertilizer, fossil fuels, irrigation, and yearly replanting. They became crops that turned soil into a consumable product rather than a living foundation. When Kernza finally emerged as a viable grain in the late 20th century, industry groups responded with indifference at best and resistance at worst. A grain that did not need replanting was bad for business. A crop that reduced fertilizer use threatened billion-dollar markets. A plant that stabilized soil challenged the very structure of industrial farming. The final blow came when early Kernza varieties spread beyond test plots. Instead of celebrating its hardiness, critics labeled it invasive. That label carries fear even when it is misused. Never mind that Kernza's ancestors had stabilized prairies for millennia. Never mind that perennial grasses are the reason the plains once held the richest soil on Earth. Never mind that it rebuilt exactly what modern agriculture destroyed. If a plant threatens profit, invasive becomes the easiest label to discredit it. But both pigeon pea and kernza refused to disappear. Pigeon pea continued to grow in dusty corners of small farms across India and East Africa. Elders saved seeds. Women kept planting it along field edges. Farmers who had nothing else to rely on returned to it during drought. It survived because it was inseparable from the land and the people who understood its value. And Kernza, nurtured by scientists and regenerative farmers, began quietly proving itself. Fields planted with Kernza developed richer soil each year. Pollinators returned. Birds nested again. Rivers stayed clearer because perennial roots stopped sediment runoff. Drought-stricken land produced grain where annual crops failed entirely. Farmers noticed that where Kernza grew, the land healed itself. Slowly, the narrative began to shift. Not from industry, not from policy, but from farmers who could see the difference beneath their feet. They saw their soil darken. They saw water retention improve. They saw resilience return to fields that once seemed dead. Both plants revealed something uncomfortable. Soil degradation is not inevitable. It is manufactured. And soil regeneration is not complicated. It is natural. Kernza and pigeon pea do not restore soil because they are innovative. They restore soil because they belong to an ecological world not yet erased by industrial systems. A world where plants serve communities, not corporations. A world where roots repair land without needing permission. The modern world labeled them so-called invasive, inefficient, or outdated because they disrupted the story. Agriculture tells about itself, that only chemicals can fix soil, that only annual crops are profitable, that farmers need external inputs rather than ecological intelligence. But as climate change accelerates, as water shortages deepen, as soils collapse from overuse, these so-called invasive plants look less like threats and more like guides. They remind us of what agriculture could be, a collaboration with ecosystems, not a conquest of them. They remind us that sustainability is not a new idea. It is an ancient memory. They remind us that the plants best suited for the future are the ones the past has already proven. 
Kernza stands like a ghost of the prairies, carrying the blueprint of a world where grain grew without destroying the land. Pigeon Pea stands like an elder of the tropics, restoring fertility where soil has been stripped bare. Both survive because the land itself protects them. Both endure because people continue to save their seeds. Both rise because ecosystems remember what industry forgets. And both ask the same question. How much longer will we ignore the plants that heal the earth? In a world starving for resilient soil, stable food systems, and regenerative agriculture, the plants we labeled invasive may be the plants that save us.